welcome back. In the last video I described the tones transmitter module and how that's used to send a signal from the from the school in our first example and the example we've used since then to the dispatch center. And I, I mentioned that it's not used very commonly anymore. And one of the big problems with it was, if you remember I said that in a normal state the reverse polarity module which is sent to the tones transmitter module would put out a positive 24 volts. Um, and then in, a, in an alarm state it would go negative. Well, in a trouble state I said it would go to zero volts, right? It would, oh, I'm in the wrong tool again. It would go to zero volts. And it wouldn't put out a tone. And one of the problems with that was this side over here, this side of the tones transmitter module, this is what would go on the pair of copper wires that goes into the ground, it goes through the telephone network and comes out into the central, you know, it eventually ends up in the central receiver which is located in that brown building, in that dispatch center. And one of the problems with that was all the different junction boxes these wires go through, you know, they come up out of the ground into one of those little green um, boxes that you see the AT&T guys working on. Anytime this wire came open, anywhere underground, I should use black there, but you get the idea. Anytime there was an open on any one of these, any one of these circuits, the fire department wouldn't know if the fire alarm panel went into trouble and that's why there's no voltage, or if if there was a cut in the wire somewhere along the line. So they may show up at the at the building, they may show up at the school and think the panel's in trouble because they got you know, the, the, this central receiver said that account number, that's one idea I haven't introduced yet and it's kind of important. The way they know which which um, which signals for which building is all these are assigned an account number. And it goes into this re central receiver as an account number. Um, you know, it's usually a four-digit four number, but it just depends on the type of technology and, and that's not significant right now. But anyway, so if you got a trouble, if you got a trouble, if you got an open circuit somewhere around here, you wouldn't know if the panel was in trouble or if it was a trouble with the phone line and it was a huge problem not to mention when it would rain you would get ground faults and that's something we haven't talked about yet but we will talk about it a lot so anyway that's part of the reason this is outdated you wouldn't know if the panel was in trouble or if there was a problem with the phone line so the customer would have to call out a fire alarm company to come troubleshoot their panel the panel would be clear but the dispatch center would be telling them oh no the panel's in trouble I don't have we're not getting that tone or you know my receivers telling me that there's a trouble on that panel and so that was really frustrating because the customer was kind of caught in the middle and you know the, the fire alarm technician would come out and say well it's AT&T's problem or whoever the phone vendor is and then AT&T may say well there's no issue on that line the line's fine and it goes back and forth and it was a huge hassle so the the, the newest version uh, or the most I don't know what to say I guess the the newer technology that's that's caught on is using wireless radio signals so the school could get an antenna and can get a radio with an antenna and then the head end dispatch center in town would get, usually they had two for redundancy, but we'll, we'll talk about that in the future if we ever get into it. And instead of having a physical landline go underground, you know, and, and, and go all the way to the, to the dispatch center, and, you know, they'd have a thousand of these for as many businesses as they had in town. Well, now you could just send a signal, just send a radio signal. It would go out through the airwaves, and it would be received by the dispatch center. And they'd still have that central receiver. It would it would be different equipment in there, but you know they'd still have this whole rack of equipment down here, and it would tell them it would interpret that signal. This would be attached to an antenna instead of these physical land these physical landlines, um, and it's it's a more reliable form of communication. So in, like I said, instead of having this hard wire underground, they would just send it through the air. And let's look at how these radios work. They're kind of neat. The the most common f um, radio that that I see. I, I guess it probably depends on where you're located, is made by a company called AES, but it's also sold by Keltron. So Keltron's a company that we talked about, the Tones Transmitter. I think they just buy it from AES and then and then um, put their name on it, whatever. But they also create some of the software that the dispatchers use. There's different, there's different software that the dispatchers use, but we're not worried about that right now. So on this radio, there's a couple different things. There's a couple different lights. One of these yellow ones, and the, there's a yellow and a green that's like a transmit and a receive. They'll both blink when there's a signal coming in. Um, there's a there's a waiting light, which if you're not able to, if it's not communicating with the central receiver, if it's not getting like a, I don't know, a sign off or whatever, not a sign off, but you know, like feedback from the central receiver, this, this waiting light will come on or it will blink depending on the severity of it. And then there's this little alarm light, which will blink if there's a zone in alarm or trouble. But the main thing I want to I want to I want to show you are these zones. There's zones one through four on the left here, 
and then there's zones 5 through 8 over here on the right. And you could buy these radios in a few different configurations, but the most common configuration is zones 1, 2, 3, and 4 usually work like our digital dialer. They work like a mini fire alarm panel. They are looking for an end-of-line resistor. If they get an open, they will send a signal. If they get a short, they will send a signal. And you can actually program the central receiver to interpret. I could, I could program it so that an open will be a fire alarm. I could do anything I want. But for the most part, it's going to send it's going to send a data packet, just like our dialer did. It's going to send some code. It says this radio account number, let's say this is account number 1000, just had an open circuit on zone 1 or a short circuit on zone 1. And I can. it's going to be a long data code that, that has the account number and the zone and what type of, whether it was an open or a short, that's, a, that's its own data code, or whether it's restored, it sees its resistor. But um, it, it work, this side of it works just like a fire alarm panel. So, well, first of all, we need, we need to power the radio up. So you can see this battery in here. There's a, there's a backup battery, and then there's a transformer. So the fire alarm panel takes 120 volts. That's something we haven't talked about yet, but it's, it's simple enough. I don't think we need to spend much time on that. So usually you use the same circuit the fire alarm's using. You take your hot circuit, go to the transformer, take your neutral, go to the transformer, and that steps it down. Usually these radios run at about 16 and a half volts AC. And then they, you know, they have little p internal power supplies that convert the power. And then you'll take your ground and, and usually just go to a, a conduit ground on the transformer. And then the radio's got its own ground here that's usually to the to the chassis of the radio. Um, I guess real quick, I can. This is this is the antenna up here. I kind of drew this antenna. That's it's about what it would look like. You can buy bigger antennas that are external and actually go outside of the building, depending on how far away your next radio is. All of these radios work like repeaters. So if you have 100 radios in town, they can all bounce signals off each other and use each other to to help get to the the head end central receiver. Um, and then there's a little box on the side here, which just kind of I don't even really want to get into that. It kind of it. it it filters out other frequencies because there could be several radio networks in a small area and you don't want them all communicating to each other. So this little box would just filter out and whatever frequency you're assigned by the manufacturer for that area, this will filter out all other frequencies. This little box that's usually mounted to the side of the cabinet. But anyway, so let's look at our zones. Let's say we take alarm for zone one and we go to our alarm context just like we did on our dialer. And then we're going to go to common, and we're going to put our resistor on there. Now, this resistor, this is something I didn't really mention much when uh, when I did the dialer, but it's the same principle here. If if this circuit opens up here, if this radio circuit opens up, is the is your fire alarm panel going to go into trouble? I mean, there's a resistor here; it's being supervised. Well, no, it's not because the fire alarm panel doesn't monitor its own alarm context. The radio is looking for this resistor, so the radio is going to go into trouble now. That's what. That's what. The same with the dialer before you had the, you had the resistor on the alarm context supervising that wire but it's the radio that's supervising it it's not the fire alarm panel and, and that's something we'll discuss more in the future okay so now we have our alarm that looks a little sloppy I apologize for that now we'll do trouble and maybe let's say these are the only zones we're using maybe we're only using one and two and there's a few different ways I can bypass this. I can I can resistor out the rest of the circuits, but there's a handheld programmer for all these radios. You plug it in, it's a, it's a, and then you could you could tell it which zones you're using. You could bypass zones three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, not nine because there's only eight zones, but you could bypass all those, or you could put you know maybe you leave all these programmed and you just resistor them out just like we do with the dialer. And that's a horrible looking resistor, but you get the idea. So. So now it's just going to work the same way as our as our last. I should use a different color here because I use that color on my battery. But the point is, this this is a complete circuit. So if the panel were to go into alarm, this would short out just like we talked about before. You know, let's say it goes into alarm. Normally open, now closes, which is shorting out this radio like we talked about before with current flow. Current's going to take the path of least resistance. So this is a little sloppy, but it's going to go through negative and this 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 continuity here through the alarm relay is less resistant I guess than the resistor so it's going to be the current's going to go up and you're going to get an alarm on zone one 
And now that alarm on zone one is going to be sent via a digital signal from that radio to the central receiver, which is located in that brown building, right? And it's going to be converted to a signal that the dispatcher can say, oh, okay, well, account number 1000 has an alarm. Uh, let's send the fire trucks. Um, I'm, I'm reaching my time limit, but I, there's more I want to talk about on this. So the next video is just going to pick up where this one left off. I'll see you in the next video.